Carl walked through the empty halls of the half-finished palace. A week ago, it had been bustling with workers, guards, masters, and slaves. Today, it was a ghost town. His footsteps echoed through the marble halls as he approached the throne room. He stopped in front of the door and critically examined the guards. Vomit, phlegm, and worse marked them and the area around their stations. One lay still on the floor while the other swayed in place, barely able to stand. They were Pulash, the most loyal of the races that serve the Klishat. You cannot, cannot, can. The Pulash guard tried to ready its weapon, and Carl drew his pistol. The guard faltered and stumbled before finally collapsing into a heap. It coughed up a gout of phlegm and pus, shuddered, and then lay still. Carl looked at the guard for a moment, his pistol still aimed at its head. After a moment, he relaxed and holstered his pistol. The guard had finally succumbed. Carl stepped around the guards and slipped through the partially open doors into the throne room. More Pulash guards were inside. He looked at them critically for a moment and decided that they had all succumbed as well. Once satisfied, he turned his attention to the seven-foot-tall reptilian being reclining on the throne. He walked forward, his footsteps clicking on the marble surface. Hearing his approach, the clashot on the throne turned and tasted the air. You, you have done this. The clashot stirred and then coughed violently. Tell me what you have done, slave, and I may give you the honor of being my feast tonight. No one will be feasting on me tonight. Carl replied calmly. He paused for a moment to examine the being that had claimed this planet as their private property and had set herself up as Diakot, or planetary ruler. And just over seven feet tall, heavily muscled and much faster than a human, the Klashat were a force to be reckoned with on the battlefield. However, this one was no threat to anyone. Its body and the throne were covered in vile fluids, and its eyes were cloudy. Carl presumed it could no longer see. We told you not to come here, Carl replied calmly. Guards, take this one. They're all dead, Carl replied calmly. We told you not to come here. Do you remember what we told you? You will suffer for this. With great effort, the Clashot raised itself up and tried to call out the battle cry that had terrified so many. Instead, the Clashot started a violent coughing fit, ending in it vomiting and falling to one knee. It spoke again, its voice hoarse. What did you do to me? Ildisit closed her eyes and recalled the early translations of the natives' feeble attempts at communication. Little warriors was the term they had used as a threat. Didn't these stupid primitives know that size and strength mattered? A full-grown noble clashot would not fall to little warriors. She had responded by bombing several of their cities and then leading the invasion herself. The initial push had been relatively easy but the primitives had responded in unexpected ways. If she had any idea of how troublesome they were going to be, she would have exterminated them all. Still, she had profited greatly from their sale as slaves. Her thoughts turned back to the present. Tasting the air to locate the pest, she croaked out. You threatened us with little warriors. How stupid could you be to think that little warriors could stand against a noble clashat? And yet here we are, Carl replied calmly. As I said, your guards and servants are dead. You are one of the few remaining invaders still living. Ildisit tasted the air again. The tang of vomit and other bodily fluids told the truth of the pest's statement. I know your taste in the air, and I know your voice. You were one that we trusted, that we taught to speak a civilized language. How did you do this to us? How could your little warriors bring down such a superior species? Little warriors, is that how you translated our warning? And that might explain your ignoring everything we tried to tell you, Carl mused. The proper terms are viruses, bacteria, and fungi. We call their effects disease. They exist naturally in the environment. All you had to do was come here and breathe. Carl's frank admission stunned Ildisit. Why did you not tell us this before? How could you hide this from us after we elevated you? How could I do this to you? Carl's calm voice turned harsh. You bombed our cities, invaded our planet, and sold our people as slaves. You eat sentient beings. You deserve this and more. No civilized people act like you do. Fools, Ildisit responded. You are stupid primitives who understand nothing. 
If you had the slightest bit of intelligence, much of the destruction and deaths of your people could have been avoided. Your deaths are on your heads for being stupid enough to defy a superior species. We are the apex of the food chain and all exist to appease and to feed us. Ildisit ended her speech with a violent coughing fit. Blood and mucus were filling her lungs and she realized that she had not long left to live. My people will come and destroy you for what you've done. She coughed again. This planet will be cleansed of you and your paltry excuse for a civilization and then it will be... be... Her mind was slowing and she struggled for the right word. Sequestered. Your world will be sequestered. Forever cut off from the larger community of races. The last of her strength finally began to fail her. You are wrong, Carl said flatly. We could not stop you from selling our people as slaves. But we could turn them into weapons. We infected them with the most lethal diseases we could create, making sure that the incubation times were long enough to ensure that they were fully in place before the diseases started having any effect. You made these... diseases? Ildisit asked, shocked. Yes, we did, Carl admitted coolly. They've plagued us for millennia and we have studied them in detail. What makes them lethal? What makes them contagious? We crafted viruses and bacteria based on lethality studies on invaders that we captured, then made sure all the slaves you exported were carriers. Despite her failing condition, Ildisit was shocked at the pest's admission. You would inflict this on billions of your superiors, and then call us uncivilized? We have spent your occupation studying you extensively. We crafted our diseases to target master species and those few that support them. We believe that most of your slave species will suffer little, if at all. Also, we now have your ships and your technology. Ildisit laughed, a sharp bark that quickly devolved into a violent coughing fit. The good bluff, but it will do you no good. Even in my state, I can see through you. You could not even begin to understand our technology, let alone fly any of our ships. She paused for effect. When my admiral fails to hear from me, he will scourge this wretched excuse of a planet and avenge my death. Carl considered the dying erstwhile ruler of the planet. Do you know why I came today at this time? He paused. I came because I received word that we had taken the fleet. All the ships in orbit and all those on the ground are now in our control. All your troops and servants are dead. Your civilization will be in shambles before anyone can do anything about it. There will be no revenge. Carl watched as the Kleshat shuddered and struggled to breathe. The end was very close. You did elevate me after all, so I wanted to tell you personally. In fact, it was your elevation of myself and other humans that allowed much of this to happen. Your certainty of your superiority blinded you to our actions— that and your complete ignorance of covert operations made this whole thing possible. He reached out and patted her arm. You made all this possible, just thought you'd want to know.